Hi, my name is Dr. Marlene Merritt. I'm a doctor of oriental medicine and an applied clinical nutritionist. And we've been doing nutrition in my practice for about 10 years. And we focus on educating people and empowering them around their health and also in breaking up myths because there's so much misinformation out there. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to teach you about the difference in vitamins and see whether or not you should take one and what's a good one. So let's get started. So you might be asking, why do I need to take a vitamin? It's like, well, most of us know that we're not great in how we're eating, and even the American Medical Association saw this when they did this recent study, which said a couple interesting things. One, it said, it appears prudent for all adults to take vitamin supplements, and they noted that insufficient vitamin intake is apparently a cause of chronic diseases, and a large proportion of the general population is apparently at increased risk for this reason. And... If you notice the date of the study, it was back in 2002, and still we see people who are um, not taking a vitamin who probably should. Well, sometimes we have people come into the office and they say, but I'm a healthy eater. And I say, are you really, really sure about that? Because there's a lot of things we do and don't do that have us not necessarily be healthy. You know, we don't necessarily eat only organic fruits and vegetables. We eat a lot of fruits sometimes more than vegetables. I make jokes about how fruits and vegetables is not one word. Do you eat only grass-fed meat, pastured eggs? Do you eat at home? I mean, if you eat out, that's problematic too. Huge serving sizes and refillable sodas, things like that. Organ meats, which are really, really nutrient-dense. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Lots of people don't like to eat those. We all seem to eat some sugar. It's hard to avoid it in today's society. People drink soda. They drink fruit juice. We don't eat real food like soup stock made from real bones. We get our soup stock now in containers. Um, we don't eat lacto-fermented foods like real sauerkraut or real pickles, things like that, which have uh, real probiotics in them. And because of low-fat dieting, we eat very little fat, which is unfortunate because good fats like butter, coconut oil, um, and other fats like that would actually protect your cells. So where are malnourished is in a bunch of different places. So low-fat diets, for example, cause deficiencies in fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, K, K2, and E. We were talking about corn-fed beef earlier. It's like, well, because when you take cows off of grass and you give them corn, you've taken them away from the food that actually had them be healthy as well, but also put omega-3s into their body, and then we, if we eat the beef, then we get that too. And corn-fed beef often is in conventional feedlots, which has hormones and antibiotics injected into the meat as well. Factory farm chickens and eggs are the same thing. If a, if a chicken gets to go outside and peck at the grass and eat bugs, then they have good nutrition. But if you stick them in, a, in factory farming and you feed them stuff that's not their natural foods, then you end up with eggs that are deficient in vitamins A, D, and omega-3s. Stress depletes vitamin Bs, all of them, magnesium and zinc. Soda intake flushes minerals out of the body and, of course, causes the damages from sugar. Drinking distilled water flushes minerals out of the body. Sugar intake, like I was saying, flushes all minerals out, especially magnesium and chromium. And magnesium is used in about 200 different enzyme reactions. So if you're low on that, there's a lot of stuff not happening. Sugar intake, again, you have to use excessive amounts of B vitamins to metabolize that. They're used to manage stress. Low stomach acid, which is probably 90% of the people who come into our office, prevents the absorption of calcium, magnesium, iron, zinc, and B12. So when you take proton pump inhibitors or you take things like Tums and you turn off your stomach acid, it prevents the absorption of those minerals in B12. If you don't put butter on your vegetables, for example, it actually makes it more difficult to get the minerals out of those vegetables. Being vegetarian gives you deficiencies in B12, zinc, vitamins A, and D because those are only found in animal products. If vegetarians are willing to eat full fat cheeses and eggs, they can avoid a lot of this. But if you're vegan, you'll definitely be deficient in those. If you eat whole grains without soaking, sprouting, or fermenting them, they have something on them called phytic acid, which prevents mineral absorption. And that's well known. That's in all basic nutrition books. And yet we eat you know, quite a bit of whole grains without taking care of uh, the phytic acid. And then, of course, there's assuming fruits and vegetables actually have nutrition in them because they did a study once where they showed a conventional orange that had no vitamin C in it. And it's because a lot of things are grown now in soil that's very, very deficient, and so then it doesn't have any nutrition in it. But we're looking at it and eating it, assuming that it does. So how do you choose? Because 
that's an awful lot of choices and a lot of bottles on the shelf and you don't know what to do. Well, on some level, we know that we should be getting our nutrition from foods. While this, this uh, headline here talks about fruits and vegetables, I'd have to add that it's also other foods like organ meats, good quality meats, seafood, oysters, for example, are the best source of zinc that exists. So it, you want to get it from real food. So which foods should we be eating? Well, the very first thing to think about is that it's actually real food. Not crazy stuff with ingredients you don't recognize. That's like all packaged for speediness. Like I'm not opposed to shortcuts, but there's there's a, a level of how much food has been messed with, basically, or whether it has ingredients in it that you wouldn't have in your own house. So there's a few things here, like you know, yes, fruits and vegetables, good pastured eggs if you can get those. Even if you can just get better quality eggs, the grocery stores now are carrying a little bit more with that. Grass-fed beef if you can get it. Full fat milk and cheese, like we don't buy low fat anything. Um, butter, real food again, has vitamins A, D, K2, and conjugated linoleic acid, which is preventive against cancer. And liver because it's one of the most minerally dense and vitamin dense things that, thing that exists. When people get concerned that liver stores toxins, I always have to point out to them that if that was true, your liver would be gargantuan when you were 80. Your liver doesn't store toxins. It conjugates toxins out of the system, but it doesn't store them. If you made soup stocks from real bones, that would give you a brilliant source of calcium as well as other minerals. And in fact, traditional cultures that ate soup regularly had four times more calcium in their bloodstream than we do now. And then lacto-fermented foods. Like it's really easy to make your own sauerkraut and your own kimchi and your own lacto-fermented foods, and then you wouldn't take probiotics because that's how traditional cultures got their own probiotics as they ate lacto-fermented foods. And if you want to know more about that, the cookbook Nourishing Traditions tells you how to prepare foods like this and also why you would want to. So let's look at like what a vitamin is in relation to food. So vitamin E, for example, is a, a host of several different things. It's got four tocopherols, it's got four tocotrienols, and xanthine, selenium, and lipositols. So this is how it looks like in food. There's a whole bunch of different things to it. The problem is, is that the FDA decided that alpha tocopherol was the active ingredient, and so it said that it renamed alpha tocopherol as vitamin E. And they did the same thing with vitamin C. Vitamin C is actually this whole complex that includes rutin and bioflavonoids. It decided that ascorbic acid was the active ingredient, and it named that vitamin C. Now what you have is something that can be made in a chemical lab, and you can make a huge amount of it. So it doesn't look anything like real food. For, for example, here's a carrot root. So carrot, you know, we think about carrots because they have beta carotene in them, in vitamin A, but the problem is, is that they have also 200 other things in there. So when you take out one thing, then you're missing all these other nutrients that are found in food. And this is for any real food. I was talking about liver. Liver's probably got like 300 different things in it. So knowing now what you know about food, you can see why synthetic vitamins might possibly be dangerous. The Cochrane Collaboration is a group of scientists who analyzed the legitimacy and accuracy of studies. And what they saw in looking at 67 different studies with nearly 400,000 participants is that no evidence exists to support taking antioxidant supplements to prevent mortality in healthy people or patients with various diseases. And what they're take talking about here is synthetic antioxidants which is what this next quote is. Treatment with beta carotene, vitamin A, and vitamin E. They're talking specifically about synthetic isolates, not what's found in food. Treatment with those may increase mortality, and they decided that after looking at 47 different trials with over 180,000 participants. And it actually gets worse than that. Synthetic antioxidants have been shown to increase rates of cancers, reduce apoptosis, which is what controls cell death, Cancer cells, for example, don't have apoptosis, and then they just keep dividing and keep dividing. They impair ovulation and affect fertility. They make no difference for cardiovascular disease. They increase your chances of stroke and increase mortality. And if you're interested, here are a bunch of references for that slide. So knowing that, now let's look at like an over-the-counter vitamin. This is a vitamin that's got a nice rainbow label. You see it all the time in your store. So this is a good example of a synthetic. And so what you look for to know if it's a synthetic is a couple things. One is very frequently it'll list things with parentheses. So vitamin C as ascorbic acid for a good example. 
The other thing is, is it will have everything in nice round numbers. It's impossible to get nice round numbers like that in real food. A couple things specifically about this label. This type of alpha tocopherol is actually the um, most inexpensive synthetic vitamin E that you can get. This calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate is actually limestone. This is the most difficult form of calcium to absorb. This has 33 different nutrients in it. So, you know, if it, it's not bad. If we were starving, this might make a huge difference. But you want to be really clear here that this is not food. Now, here's a label that does kind of a combination of things. <clears throat> First, since you're now experts at this, you notice everything that has a parentheses in it. Then over here, everything that's got uh, nice round numbers in it, so you know these are synthetics. This line distinguishes the synthetics above from the foods below. One thing to know, though, is that those synthetics do not come from the food below. Those are two separate things. So the synthetics are not coming from food. A couple of interesting things here, too, though. So beta carotene isn't actually vitamin A. Beta carotene is the precursor to vitamin A, and there are a lot of people who can't properly convert that. So, for example, diabetics, people with celiac disease, hypothyroid people, or babies often have a very difficult time converting beta carotene to A. Secondly, we have over a thousand percent here of vitamin C as ascorbic acid. And really, do we need a thousand percent of anything? Over here, this 200 IUs of vitamin E. So, a couple slides ago, I was showing that that taking alpha tocopherol increased your chance of cerebral hemorrhage. That was with only 50 milligrams. 200 IUs converts to 132 milligrams, which is nearly three times that amount. So here we go to come to the food. So here's some food elements. There's green tea extract, pomegranate extract, bilberry. So those are pretty good. The problem is there's only 99 milligrams in there. A dime, for example, weighs 2,000 milligrams. Two grams, so this is a tiny, tiny amount. Same thing here with the broccoli concentrate. It's a good effort, but it's only 7.5 milligrams, so there's not much in there. There's 13 synthetics here, 9 foods, and then 7 other things like, like an olive extract. Now this is the vitamin that we carry in our office. So there's a couple synthetics in here because the label has to be FDA compliant, so that if the FDA comes looking for vitamin C, it actually finds 4 milligrams of, of ascorbic acid. But that's not why you take this vitamin. You take this vitamin for that. You take it because it's got a bunch of organ meats in it, for example, that you wouldn't normally be eating, but have really, really dense nutrition to them. You also take it because it's got a bunch of different plant products in it. So wheat, German, nutritional yeast are really high products for vitamin B. Dried pea vine juice has an enormous amount of vitamin E as a, as a food form of that. Alfalfa as a plant has a really deep root and it's got a ton of minerals in it because of that. Mushroom has vitamin C, the whole complex. Soybean lecithin helps to clear old cholesterol deposits. You know, so you're looking at a, at a supplement that has literally thousands of different nutrients in it. Like you don't need a lot of one thing, you need a little of everything. And that's what something like a food concentrate like this provides. You know, somebody gave me a really good analogy once and said, if you have a watch that's got like a bunch of different pieces to it and large amounts of that, it's like the watch still won't work if it's missing one or two different things. You know, it's the same thing. When you take a synthetic, you're getting just a few things, but you're missing a whole bunch of other stuff. So in summary, if you want to eat as well as you can, that would be great. Avoid sugar, eat liver if you can, try to eat at home if you can, no soda. People say it's expensive to do this, but it isn't actually true. We spend less on our food now than we did 30 years ago and a smaller percentage of our income as well. And eat low carb so you don't get diabetes or you start reversing the diabetes you do have. Don't avoid fats and ask yourself, would your grandmother or great-grandmother recognize what you're eating? Because there's a lot of Franken food out there. Avoid large amounts of synthetic isolates. In other words, over-the-counter cheap vitamins and powders because they really will increase your, increase your chances of many different other diseases. And yes, you probably need to take a supplement because we're all probably a bit malnourished, so you might want to make it a really good one. And in all honesty, the best supplements are sold through healthcare practitioners. So talk to your acupuncturist, talk to your chiropractor, see what is available food concentrate-wise that will help you. And when we talk to people like about our basic stuff, our basics are like a good high-quality whole food concentrate like what I just showed you, fish oil, taking vitamin D3 and taking minerals. That would give you a really great foundation. 
So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you learned something here. If you have any questions, please contact us through the website right there. And thank you so much again.